Okay, I'm going to quickly go over the nebular theory again. If you have questions, this is a good place for you to refer to. Remember, this is the same thing that is covered in the formation of the solar system assignment. Um, so this is the nebular uh, theory, which talks about the formation of our solar system. Um, don't get this confused with the Big Bang theory, which is the formation of our universe. So this nebular theory of the formation of our solar system is many, many billion years after the formation of our universe. Okay, so as this started out, we had a nebula, which is a giant cloud of dust and gas, and mostly hydrogen and helium. And this was probably several light years across, um, and it could have been from um, other stars that had exploded, or it was just a, a clump of dust and gas that was more concentrated than what was normal in space. Okay, so something nearby, probably a supernova, um, exploded, which makes the nebula begin to collapse and that caused it to collapse towards its center. And gravity is playing a major role in pulling the, the dust and gas towards that center now. And once this happens, that nebula starts to rotate. Okay, and so if you don't remember, a supernova is an exploding star. So that again makes this concentration in the center and that concentration allows for gravity to pull more dust and gas towards that center. Once this is spinning, um, it, this cloud of dust and gas flattens out into what's called an accretion disk, and it starts to spin faster and faster and heats up. And again, it's gravity that's making this spin around, and it's also going to start pulling more of that dust and gas in towards the center. Okay, And once there's enough, we form what's called a protosun, and that's a, a young star early in its life. Um, it, it could be before it begins using fusion or it's just started using fusion but it's not a full sun yet and so again we've got the proto sun in the middle and gravity is what's holding it there and it's pulling more dust and gas into it and the gravity has also flattened out that accretion disk okay out in the accretion disk that's orbiting around uh, this proto sun we start to form planetesimals. And again, it's gravity that's pulling these chunks together. Okay, so they're clumping together, and once there gets to be more, it's gonna, gravity's gonna be stronger, so it's gonna be pulling more, more of them towards it. And these planetesimals um, are baby planets, basically. They're small, odd-shaped planet-like objects, and they are the building blocks of our solar system. So as this picture kind of shows, we have our protosun in the middle, we've got our accretion disk that's orbiting around that, Proto Sun, and in that accretion disk, there's chunks of rock and ice that are our planetesimals. Okay, and again, these small planetesimals, because of gravity, they're going to be pulled towards each other. They're going to collide with each other and kind of clump up, and the um, the inner and the outer planets will begin to grow. And again, it's gravity that's keeping these things in orbit around the Proto Sun, and it's gravity that's pulling them towards each other and clumping them up. All right, so we're going to get our inner planets first, and we're going to talk about why they're a little different than our outer planets. So there are terrestrial planets. They're Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Um, they are smaller, they're rockier, and denser than our outer planets. And they are heavier percentages of iron and nickel. Okay, And that has to do with gravity, but it has more to do with the gravity of the sun, or the proto-sun, that it has pulled that those heavier elements, iron and nickel, towards it, so that they're closer to it, and they, that's why they become a part of the inner planets rather than the outer planets. But gravity for these inner planets is not strong enough to hold on to lighter elements like gases. Um, and so once this proto-sun starts giving off light, um, there's what's called a solar wind, and it either boils away or it blows away that um, lighter elements, those gases and things, towards the outer planets. So that's why some of our inner planets don't have much of an atmosphere. And we have our outer planets, which are our gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. They are mostly gas, they have low densities, and they're very, very large. They did not lose their lighter elements or ice. They're too far away for that solar wind to do much to push away their um, light elements. But they also had some large mass among themselves, and so they were where all of those elements went and they got swept up by those planets as they orbit the protosun. 
Okay, the, there's lots of heat and pressure in them, and that forms li layers of liquids and gases. Um, and we can see some of those, especially on the pictures there of Jupiter and Saturn. They are made up of lots of gas and liquids as they get closer to their centers.